the voice of God sounds from the word of God when we study God's word when we look at God's word the voice of God sounds from God's word and the voice of God is a cure to the noise of life <laughs> the voice of God is a cure to the noise of sickness the reason why that stagnation in your career is there is because it has not had the voice of God. Once I've God spoken, twice I've had that power belong to God. So that power is surviving because the voice is not yet sounding. If you have access to the voice, you will terminate that noise. This morning, every negative voice in your life, I sound the voice of God that they are subdued in the name of Jesus. It's my new dawn era. That shall be a portion forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank God for all God did in the first service. And we are so sure that with assurance in God that everybody in this service will also return with a definite change of story. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. Shout a better amen. amen. Riding on waves, riding the waves of glory, part two B. In this season of glory, you will not see shame. In this season of glory, you will not see shame. In this season of glory, you will not see shame. Saying that, like us to understand this morning that you're being in church should give you rest because church is a place of answers. There might be trouble everywhere. There might be tension everywhere. Disappointment everywhere. Frustration everywhere. Reproach everywhere. But upon Mount Zion, there shall be. Obada verse 17. There might be disappointment everywhere. Oppression. Stagnation. Unwanted situation. Frustrated circumstances. But upon Mount Zion. Which means anywhere you might have been. It's fine. But when you enter Zion, there must be a change. But upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. And holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. This morning, you are possessing the right key. Amen. You have been using a wrong key. That's why you are struggling. To have a key does not guarantee to, have to enter the house. There are some keys you have in your pocket now. They are your house keys. They can't enter the office key. I mean, they can't open the office key. Yeah. Uh, the of, um, office door. They are keys to your house. They are not the keys to your, I mean, to your offices. So to have a key is not to have the answer, but you have the right key. This morning, God is giving everybody the right key to the next door of breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. Riding the waves of glory, part 2b. By redemption, we have been justified to be glorified. By redemption, we have been justified to be glorified. You were born again into glory. Being born again is to be given birth to into glory, not into shame. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans 8, verse 29. For whom he did for know, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among the brethren, many brethren. Moreover, to whom he did predestinate, them he also called, whom he called, them he also justified, whom he justified, them he also glorified. So, the, the ultimate agenda of salvation 
is glorification. We have been saved not to be damaged. We have been saved to be elevated. Salvation brings you to glorification. And this morning, whatever is not glorifying God in your life shall be brought to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. But we can only ride the ways of glory by engaging the diverse operations of the Spirit. Diverse operations of the Spirit. Diverse operations of the Spirit. The Spirit of God operates in diverse ways. It's not a one-way God. It's a multifaceted God, for example. We know that there are ordinances in scriptures that guarantees our victory over the devil. For example, we engage anointing oil. We engage the blood of Jesus in diverse ways. Blood sprinkling. We engage feet washing. We engage communion. Now, there are some things that anointing is what God wanted to use. And now you are sprinkling the blood. It won't work. There may be some challenges that God wants you to speak the word. He said, no, I must call a pastor. There may be challenges that God wants you to use the mantle. But he said, no, I will sprinkle the blood. If you don't use the right key, you can't enter your desired door. If you don't use the right key, you can't enter your desired house. It may be your house, but you need the key. Many of us have destinies awaiting us, but we don't have the right key. This morning, God will give you the right key. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Like I said, the diverse operations of the Spirit of God in assessing or riding the waves of glory. And by the grace of God, remember the Bible says in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, it says, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. You can't enter your promised land by power because you didn't promise yourself. You can't enter your Canaan. That's why Israelites couldn't have entered Canaan by their strength. They entered it by the Spirit of the Lord in the pillar of cloud and pillar of fire. So we need the Spirit of God to enter or to ride the waves of glory. This morning, we shall be baptized afresh with the Spirit of God. Amen. In the first service, by the grace of God, we focus on the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. You can get a CD to bless a lot. But the spirit of faith is a spirit behind creation. So if you must create what has been stolen, you need it. If you must initiate what has never existed, you need that spirit. If you must Start what has never been in existence. You need that spirit. Because in the beginning, when God was confronted with darkness, it was the spirit of faith that created it. What is the spirit of faith? The spirit of faith is the spirit that speaks what does not exist. The spirit that creates what has never been oppression. The spirit that starts what has never been heard of. The spirit that makes happen what has never happened. Spirit of faith. We need our spirit if we must enter or ride the ways of glory. This month, today, God will baptize us afresh with the spirit of faith. Amen. So, as much as, as much as you can, try to get a CD and to bless your Lord. Now, this service, we are focusing on the spirit of servanthood. In riding the ways of glory, the spirit of servanthood. We are in an age where everybody wants to be recognized. We are in an age where everybody wants to be a boss. We are in a setting, an environment, society, where everybody wants to be respected. Everybody wants to be the king, wants to be the leader. You can't be a leader without first being a servant. If you ever be, you'll be a bad leader. You can be a leader productively, fruitfully, 
or otherwise in the positive without first being a servant. Let me say this here. One of the reasons why we go to school, among others, is to understand the rigor of school. To understand that it is not just easy. To understand when others are going through it. If you don't understand servanthood, you can't be a leader forever. Isaiah chapter 42, 1 to 4. Beyond my servant, whom I be uphold, my elect, in whom my soul delighted, I have put my spirit upon him. Isaiah 42, from verse 1. I have put my spirit, the spirit of servanthood. The spirit of servanthood. The, now, verse 2. Verse 2. It says, He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, the smoking flax shall he not quench, he shall bring forth judgment on the truth. Now verse 3, 4. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth, and the house shall wait for his law. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged. Don't wait for men's encouragement to serve your God. That's why I pity people. I'm not going to touch again. I'm not going to touch again. Lack understanding. I keep telling people, stop running away from challenges. Challenges are very good for brethren. Challenges is what makes you know your level of faith. If you don't have challenges, you won't know your level. You will think you are spiritual until you see the devil. You think you're on fire until you meet some demonic fires. Challenges comes to make us. If we allow, allow them to make us. You know, some individuals came to see me from you know, one country. And one of them, I showed the person one video like that. Just one video about you know, somebody being demonized. And you see, I think this man, this person, used to sleep around with ladies. So when he saw the video, he said, ah, pastor, this thing is real. Oh. Ah, pastor, ah. he was shaking. I said, what is the matter? I said, what about me that was praying for the person? He said, ah, pastor, please send this. I need to see this thing. Ah, pastor, ah, I thought it's real. I thought it's fake. I thought he needed to see when he was confessing. His friend was not telling him that, ah, what's in the way? That you say you have used yourself, I mean, you have useless yourself. You have slept with ladies. Now, what am I saying? That says? You will never know you are spiritual until you face the reality of demonic forces. And as you serve God, you are empowered by God. As you serve God, you are empowered by God. Like I keep saying, the challenges of life, they don't have timetable. The operations of witches does not have schedule to reveal to you. They can have schedule of the day they want to kill, but they won't tell you they are coming today. So, our service is our guarantee for his presence, for his protection, for his mighty, you know, presence in our lives. The more you serve God, the more you carry God. Think about it. We all here are what? Christians. Why are we Christians? Nomenclature wise. Because we are carrying the name of Jesus. We serve Christ. Therefore, we identify with Christ even though maybe not all of us are genuine. Maybe. Maybe some are in church to look for girls. Maybe some are in church to look for connection. Like I was told, well, some churches in a particular nation that the, 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 the people there, they only go there for business meeting. Their, their focus is business meeting to meet, you know, the timber and calibers of the society because they're in church. They may be claiming they are serving God, but God knows they're not serving him. The spirit of servanthood, 
the spirit that is rooted in service. Hallelujah. I pray God will open our hearts Amen. and open our eyes. Amen. We shall be taking a clue from Jesus, who is a servant of all, but now today is the greatest of all. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Remember, we are talking about riding the waves of glory. Riding the waves, riding the waves, riding the waves. Somebody is here, your name will spread across the world. Amen. The grace coming upon you this morning will announce you globally. Amen. God will cause whatever you do to prosper to the point where my nations will be consulting you. Amen. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Which mind? The mind that was supposed to be a God who in, form, in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But instead of being a God who is supposedly be but made himself of no reputation. If you must be a servant lose your nature. Where is nature? Lose your nature, number one. If you must be a servant, lose your nature. Wear Christ's nature. That's who I am. When you see people talking like that, they don't respect God. That's who I am. That, don't, don't go there. That, I, I get angry, I get angry. Even God, Jesus was angry in scriptures. Don't look for scripture to, to, to damage your destiny. Because you want to satisfy yourself. Lose your nature. Embrace his nature. There are some people, if, when, if, even when they beg them for Christ's sake, they never. My word is the final. Please now, for Christ's sake. Mm -mm. Ah -ah. Okay, for God's sake, never forget. God knows me. Ah. You see, when people are like that, let me reserve my comments. I said, for, I said, forget God in this matter. This one, forget it. Ah, ah. Hey, senior God. <laughs> Take it easy. When you start talking like that, you are a danger to yourself. When you don't consider God again, I said, forget God. Ah, forget God. Ah, God knows that you created me this way. Ah, he was. Okay. When you start behaving like that, removing God from your calendar, you have empty God in his agenda. It's agenda for your life, you have removed him. So you are on your own. What they call OYO. OYO. Made himself of no reputation. No reputation. No reputation. No reputation. People's mentality of their reputation is the reason why they are not enjoying God's glorification. When you are too full of yourself, too full of yourself. You, have not been the, you are not the richest person in South Africa. But yet, when you talk, you want everybody to keep quiet. I'm talking, my friend, keep quiet. Uh -uh. From here to where? Because of some cars, there are some who are driving, which they borrowed the money to buy it. And they will still pay it the next 10 years. When they walk on the streets, they want everybody to be subdued. Be careful. Not to ride yourself to the grave. Be careful not to allow pride. See, pride is a ride towards destruction. When you are proud, you, you are already on a ride. Ride that destroys suddenly. Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, made himself of not low reputation, but of no no reputation. Not that I'm this. He has the right to say I'm God. But yet, he said, as I hear, I judge. I still need to hear the master to tell, tell me. Please, if you are a boss to people in offices, be careful. If you are a manager, be careful. No matter your class, be careful. 
If you don't, if you, are, if you don't assume the nature of no reputation, you may not enjoy God's glorification. Hallelujah. Amen. That's number one. Number two, he took upon him the form of a servant. What does it mean? Have a serving heart. A serving heart. Not a serving hand. When you have a serving heart, automatically you possess a serving hand. Have a serving heart. The heart that serves. If you must follow the order of Jesus, a heart that serves. In most cases, when the body has gone home, after service, I'll say go around and pick the dead. I'm not saying it to prove anything. I'm only telling you we are talking about servant too. To pick the dead. And I thought one of our pastors was around like two weeks ago. He said, Pastor, why are you doing this? I said, which of us will leave our house dirty and go and sleep? If this is your father's house, you reach and go. <laughs> Maybe somebody is doing it right now, putting sweet on the floor. It might not make much of big sense, but it makes big sense to God. This is our father's house. If it's your father. When everybody has gone home, and some people still see me, they look, this pastor, nonsense, digging dirt, ah, at his level. Nonsense to them. Because I know what I'm doing. Some people be watching me when I'm doing it. I'm picking it. <laughs> Leave sanctuary alone now. Is it sanctuary's house or God's house? A serving heart. You don't need to see this point before you don't tell people to do it. You do it. You see somebody who doesn't have school fees and you have it. I say, you see, that's one they, they will be giving children anyhow. Nonsense. Don't mind them. Pay the school fees. Have a serving heart. A serving heart. A serving heart. The heart that serves. When God sees the heart that serves, He bless the hands available. Have the heart that serves. The spirit of servanthood. I once mentioned here um, last year or two years ago, 2011, 2012, thereabout, by privilege. There's one guy that was staying in my house as an orphan. This was genuine. There are two that stayed. One was fake, one was genuine. Now, this genuine orphan told me that his father and his mother died of poverty. As in no food, you kill them. And his own brother, too, was now to get married around 2012, thereabout. And I said, God, you see my heart. If you bless me, I will sponsor this wedding from the beginning to the end. To cut a long story short. And when the wedding was coming, guess what? God blessed me. As the money was coming, I didn't use the money for anything in my life. Bought the suit for the guy, bought the wedding gown, bought the bread or whatever, bought, bought the food, bought the drink, and did the wedding for this boy. I've never seen him face to face. And I've not seen him since that time. They only sent picture to me. A serving heart will provoke the release of the hand of God. When your heart serves, when your heart serves, you are a genuine servant. Many can be a unit for people to applaud them that ah, that guy is a committed member. Many can be a unit so that they can become deacon. Many may want to stand. Hey, yes, we are the one here. Yeah, move, move, move. Uh, story. Hey, move. No, no, don't take that. Don't do that. Uh, story. The heart may be dirty like a gutter. It is a serving heart that qualifies for a reward from God. The spirit of servanthood, not the body of service. The spirit of service. The spirit of service. A serving heart. And next point is that the Bible says that it was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Next thing is humility. Humility. Be humble to the point whereby 
You don't need to tell people who you are. They tell you who you are. You see, when people are saying that, you don't know me? Ah, he's a proud person. You don't know who I am? Ah, no. If you know me, you will not. <laughs> oh, Mo, it shows you are proud, man. You are proud. Humility of the heart. Whereby you don't, by the grace of God, by privilege, I don't tell people I'm a pastor. It is, in most cases, when I call, and when the person could not identify, I said, my name is David. My name is David. When the time is now getting uh, wasted, I say, okay, my name is Pastor David then. So I can understand. I'm telling you, that it might have happened to some people. I don't need to. Don't look for titles. Don't look for importance. Look for the way to become relevant. When you are relevant, you will be significant. When you are relevant, you will be significant. Don't look for a means to be important. Look for a means to be relevant. Hallelujah. Amen. No matter how small salt is, it's relevant in a stew. That's relevance. Many are big. They are useless. Why? Some are small in their eyes, but they are relevant. Don't try to become big before people. Let your impact make you big. Let what you are doing in their lives make you big. Sincerely. Since I've been in South Africa, I can count the number of times that people have come to see me here from other nations. My privilege. From other nations. Traveling from, one came from U.S. A number of times, two, three, have come from Nigeria. Just to see me and go back by privilege. If there's nothing, what are they looking for? Somebody once said, he said, the person that came from U.S., does it mean he didn't see any pastor in the whole of U.S.? I said, go and ask, go and ask. What's my own? Make yourself humble in your eyes. Okay, the truth is this. Where your solution is, is never far. Wherever your solution is, is never far. So, I like us to understand that be humble in your heart and God will lift you up in due time. Be humble. Be of the humility of the heart. Don't ever say who you are not. Some ladies' ears are full of lies, and they are happy that they are, they are in the midst of lies. They don't know they are lying. They've lied to them. My father is the owner of Owando in Nigeria. <laughs> in fact, you see, me and the person that I own, uh, Swiss France, eh? We, I mean, we, uh, uh, we, we are together. We, you see, we meet in. Uh, you see, it's very easy for a liar to deceive a liar. <laughs> it's very, very easy. When they lie to you and you eat it raw, it's because you also you are likely to be a liar too. Otherwise, if they lie to you, in a short time, it will be exposed. If it's not exposed, it's because two has caught four. Be humble in your heart. Be humble in your heart. God is the lifter of men. Don't try to lift yourself. Let me give you an example, and I'll go to the next point. When you jump, you come down. <laughs> Stop jumping. Let God lift you. People jump to struggle to go up, but they come down eventually. <laughs> they struggle. Bah, bah. They may even go higher. Bah. They try. Bah. That's why many are degrading gradually, decaying gradually, because they are struggling to make it. Psalms 5, verse 5 to 7. The Bible says, promotion comes neither from north, from east, Psalm 6, verse 6. Not from east, from west, from south. 7. It says, God is a judge. That judge means God is a lifter. God is a, he set that one up and bring it another down. God is the one that lifts. But he said, it is the meek that he will exalt. The meek will he exalt. The meek, the humble, will he lift. Please don't try to lift yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. 
May the Lord grant us understanding. Amen. Wherefore, now look at it. Okay, um, next point. He became obedient unto death and death of the cross. That's the last point. Be absolutely obedient to the instructions from God. He was obedient to the death. Obedient to the death. As long as God is the one speaking, please be desperate to obey. As long as it's God, be desperate to obey. By privilege, I'm a product of obedience. By privilege, I'm telling you. Many of the stages of my life, I would have missed it if I had not followed God's instruction. In marriage, God told me this is it. In ministry, God told me it is time. When I was to get a job, he said, go to the south. Obedience, 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 obedience. Maybe God has told somebody, I'll be paying 20%. He said, no, 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 no. God, your Bible says 10%. I can't pay 20%. Ah, God, now, you don't follow, you follow your word. He said 10%. Ah, no, don't do that. <laughs> ah, you see, our brains are too small to bargain with the grace of God. Don't use your brain to analyze God. Let your spirit man follow God's instruction. Jesus did not argue with God. Lord, I can't die. He said, no. Well, if possible, let it come pass over me. But nevertheless, let your will be done. I said something in the first service. I said, I have buried my desire in the will of God. I don't have desire again. Because the God that created me has an agenda. But now, we now draw a new calendar. Ensure you are obedient to the last word. We receive the grace of obedience in Jesus' name. Amen. But why do we need the spirit of servanthood? Because we may never receive a thank you. If you don't have the spirit of servanthood, when they don't thank you, you are angry. <laughs> when somebody gives something, I say no measure. It's a lie. He wanted to mention it. Say, no, no, no mention, no, no, no mention. He said, in the heart of his heart, say more, say more, say more. <laughs> but because, you know, just for religious humility, no, no mention, no, no, it's, no, it's one of those things, no. But he wanted to say more. When you don't receive thank you, he said, imagine, I gave you 500, he can't even say thank you. Ah, I will not do it. <laughs> you get angry. <laughs> when you have the spirit of, spirit of servanthood, what they do or they don't do will not change what you do. Because it is no more you. It is not the spirit. Luke 17, 7 to 10. Luke 17, 7 to 10. The Bible says from verse 8. Okay, but which of you, having a servant plowing and feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by, when he is coming from the field, go and sit down to meet, and will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup, and gather yourselves, and serve me, till I have eaten and drunken. Afterward, that Thou shalt eat and drink. Verse 9. Do doth he thank that servant because he did the things which were commanded of him. So likewise, verse 10. When ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are prof unprofitable servant. We have done that which was our duty to do. It is your duty to serve. Don't expect a thank you. See it as a privilege. Somebody coming from U.S., he has been, somebody no, from Canada, Somebody referred my, sent my number to somebody in Canada to call me who has been having sleepless nights and attacks in dreams. So I said, I, I prayed for him. When I prayed for him, then I said, he should call me in the night when he's about to sleep. He said, it should be in the middle of the night. Oh. He said, won't I sleep? I said, no, don't worry. It's my, it's my life. My life is 24 hours to serve men. It's choice. When you serve men, God will cause men to serve you. I'm telling you, he's understanding. No, no, there should be schedule, time to pray. Somebody is dying, he said you are sleeping. And you're a pastor. No, you're a killer. That's the point. That's the way me I see it. It might be too personal, but you see, if it's your own wife dying, we say he's sleeping. No. And he called me around 2 a.m., 3 a.m., thereabouts, and I peeked. I said, okay, so, sir, as you pray now, I mean, as you sleep now, by the time he woke up, woke up he said, in a very long time, he slept without attack. Shouldn't that be my joy? That's my sleep. The testimony is my own sleep. 
That is the heart that serves. That is not expecting thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Why do we need that spirit? Service becomes our hobby. We, we take delight in it. I, personally, I enjoy when people are happy. If you are sad in my office, I will cast you out. Because now, sadness is contagious. The same way laughter is contagious. So you are either sad or happy. So if you are, if you are looking, please, could you please excuse me? Sorry. Don't tamper with my joy. When people are happy, I'm excited. You can't be crying, I'll be happy. No. But can you, don't ever think you use that one to tempt me. No matter what. Holy Ghost will control me. But the truth is this. Sadness is synonymous to sickness. So when you make others happy, you rescue them from sickness. Hallelujah. Amen. Number three, you are not weary. So you don't lose your reward. Galatians 6, 9. It says, do not be weary in well-doing, for you shall reap it in due season if you faint not. So when you have that spirit, you are continuous. And the more you do it, the more you rise. It takes those who go to school to pass. Because only those who go to school can write the exam. So the more you serve, the more you rise. The more you rise, the more you fly. I pray we shall all receive the spirit of servanthood in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Also, only stewards receive rewards. John 4, 35 and 36. He that repeat, receiveth wages. So it takes service to receive payment. We need to keep serving to be due for the words. Number four, without stewardship, there's no enthronement. If you must wear a crown, then you must serve to wear the crown. Luke 22, verse 27. For whether it is, it is, whether it is greater or he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth, is he not that sitteth at meat, but I'm among you as he that serveth. Jesus Christ speaking himself. I'm among you as he that serveth. As he that serveth. As he that serve it. Please look for where to serve. Don't look for who to serve you. Look for where to serve. Look for who to serve. Don't be a bench woman in the church. Serve God. Your service is your ticket to your rising. Your service is your ticket to your blessing. Thou shalt serve and he shall bless. When God blesses, glory arrives. The glory of God comes with the blessings of God. Because from the glory of, from the blessing of God is, the blessing of God is from his presence. And his presence is full of glory. So when God blesses, glory comes down. So you can't be blessed and not be glorious. Hallelujah. He said, ye are they which continue with me in my temptations. Verse 28. And I appoint unto you a kingdom. So enthronement comes with service. Enthronement comes with still worship. I see God enthroning you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me ask this question. Have you ever been tired of driving when you're going for an exam? You can't be tired of driving when you're going to work. In the context of something is ahead. The same way you choose, you have to drive because you have no choice. Because you have to get there. You can be tired normally, but not when something is ahead of you. Some of us know the way we drive when we are late for some occasions. As if you don't know there's a robot on the way. Because something is pushing you. Let the reward of service push you. Let the reward of service drive you. Look at our father Bishop Wedebo. Till forever, he's still serving. He's still serving. At 64, running up and down for Jesus. At 64, some people are just 34. They cannot even serve God for one week. To even go and do evangelism, says, you see, my bones, and they, they do crank, 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 crank. Every time, you see, that's why, at 34, and Bishop Wedebo, our father, in 64, still trek to do evangelism in the car. But here you are, you give excuses. Excuses squeezes destinies. The more you give excuse, um, ex ex excuse the more you squeeze your chance. The more you give God a chance to serve, I mean, to, 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 I mean, to you serve God, the more you give chance to bless. I pray God will grant us understanding. Amen. Now, today is a covenant day of open doors. 
Understand that without keys, no door can open. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, and verse 19. Verse 19 now. It says, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I will give unto thee keys. Say, Lord, give me. You don't want it. Some of these say, say, Lord, give me. Some of you are doing silent talking. Say, Lord, give me. So in case angel is passing now, of which they are here. If you don't say, you won't get it. Say, Lord, give me. Lord, what? Give you what? Jesus. To what? Jesus. Eh? Jesus. Which door? Jesus. Eh? Jesus. Close eyes and pray. Lord, give me the keys. Brodia. Lord, give me the keys. Karaba, shakaraba, la, la, The keys, the keys, the keys, the keys. Parakatasasa. Ata, prakata, prania. Shampadia. The keys to breakthrough, the keys to favor, the keys to lifting, the keys to my promotion. I receive the keys. I receive the keys. I receive the keys. I receive the keys. In this service, Barakataya Katarabia, Ata Pranianosa. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Stretch your hands. I decree in this service, you are receiving the keys to your promotion. In this service, you are receiving the key to your lifting. Amen. You are receiving the key to your marital breakthrough. Amen. The key to your change of levels. Amen. The key to a new beginning. Amen. The key to your restoration. Amen. Say, I receive. I receive. Give just a beginning of praise and please get seated. Hallelujah. Amen. I like us to understand that God is set to reset your life. You know, when a phone or a gadget is having a challenge, they say, put it back to factory. There's a factory setting that our life needs to be put in. This is not how God created some of us. We have put our heads, our mouth, our hands, our legs in wrong places. So they have distort I mean, there's, there's a distortion on God's setting of our lives. And until there's a resetting, we live in frustration. This morning, God is resetting your life. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. Shout a better amen. amen. Now, in just a few minutes that we have, as we close in a short while, everyone called a child of God, or every believer, is expected to enjoy open doors. Open doors. Open doors. Open doors. Simply because the Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not, not I may not want. I shall not want. The Lord, if the Lord is my shepherd, doors open to God on their own accord. Those open to God because he, is, he said, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He's even the door himself. So when he gets to doors, he swallows up other doors. When he gets to doors, other doors quenches. I mean, they crumble. They bow. So it's as if doors never existed. Because he is the way. Every other way becomes a stepping stone. So to be, to make the Lord your shepherd makes you to have a place where you, I mean, it makes you to enjoy the grace that gives you open doors. At your appearance, doors just crumble. You don't need to open them. They crumble by themselves. But that is when the Lord is your shepherd. From this service, every door shall be opened. <laughs> But if the Lord must be your shepherd, he must be your lover. If the Lord must be your shepherd, he must be your lover. First John chapter 4, verse 16. And we have known and believed the Lord that God to us, that God is love. And he that dwelleth in love, dwelleth in God. And God in him. 
Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so we are in this world. There is no fear in love, but because, I mean, but perfect love casts away fear. Because fear atomates, and in that fear it is not made perfect in love. Now, God in us and we in God. So when God is your lover, he automatically becomes your shepherd. And when he's your shepherd, doors crumbles at his presence. Open doors automatic. Make sure the love of God is engraven in your heart. Or engraved in your heart. Make sure the love of God is, is established in your heart. Because the love of God makes you a ruler in the world. The love of God, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not entered the heart of man. What God has prepared for his lovers. When you are a God lover, you are a co-owner with the world. When you are a God lover, you are a co-owner of the world. Remember, 1 Corinthians 39. Ye are, we, I mean, we are co-laborers with Christ, with God. Co-laborers, 1 Corinthians 39. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husband. So we are working with God. When you are a lover of God, you are a co-laborer with God. Automatically, you are a co-owner. Enjoy loving God. And you enjoy managing the world. I'd like you to understand that there is a way to prove you love God. If you love God, you will love what he loves. Many don't like some things. But because they want to prove to their girlfriend they love, they say, okay, I like it. It's okay, it's fine, it's fine. Many is fine. They are not fine. Inside them, inside them, them they are killing themselves. It's fine. When they get on, they say, oh, Kai, no sense. I just, you know, they, ah, if I don't say that in you, know, you are dying inside. Just because you want to please her. Oh, it's fine, it's fine. He said, you want to go there, it's fine. Let's go to KFC, it's fine. I don't have money. Let's go to McDonald's, it's fine. <laughs> In evening, let's go to the basket. It's fine. <laughs> that is fine. We'll be going now gradually. Ah, it's fine now. Ah, it's fine. Because now, it's, now, it's no more fine. Really, really. Just because of love. Fake love. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> but if you are saying that to God, you have a reward. When you say it's fine for God, when it's not easy, there's a blessing. This is what they are wasted effort. Many men have become mobile ATM. <laughs> Hello. Hello, love. You know, I love you so much. Please, can you quickly get 5,000? Oh, 5,000. Okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> mobile ATM. Mobile ATM. You see, that's why I love you so much. Fake love. Just because of pockets. I pray your eyes will be opened. And you see, after they collected the money, you have forgotten who you are. You don't remember after the money has gone. Ah, kill it late by your law. Eh? What's this? Love God, you will not lose your life. Love God, stop loving women. Start loving your maker. Stop loving men. Start loving God. When God becomes your lover, I'm telling you, doors will open on their own accord. Glory to God. I pray this morning, God will open our hearts. To love God better in the name of Jesus Christ. What does God love? In conclusion, for God so loved the world. Love souls, love his kingdom. Love souls, love his kingdom. Don't love because of what you get. Love because of what you give. Don't love because of what they will say. Love because of the change you will make. Don't love because of what is happening. Love because of what you want to make happen. Hallelujah. I pray from this communion, the spirit of love, in God, in Jesus, will be, will be released upon our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In conclusion, through this communion, the breakthrough power that open doors on their own accord rests upon this communion in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as you partake of it, our eyes shall be opened. Amen. The doors shall be opened Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 